Greetings Spartan and welcome back to the UNSC Infinity War Game Simulation Training Program. Today Spartan we will be covering the DMR. The M395 designated marksman rifle is a human weapon developed by Misraya Armory. It's a gas operated magazine fed bullpup rifle that comes standard with a 3x magnification scope for enhanced precision. The DMR was first introduced during the insurrection as the M392 to fill the UNSC's need for a designated marksman's rifle. A designated marksman is a member of a squad that is armed with a high-powered precision infantry rifle, and it is their job to provide sniper-like support on a squad level. The M392 filled this role brilliantly, and it was an instrumental part of the defense during the Battle of Reach. After the Human Covenant War ended, Miss Raya redesigned the DMR into the M395. While it's very similar to its previous iteration, it now has greatly increased recoil control and accuracy thanks to a heftier stock, an extended barrel, and a muzzle brake. It is a very well-balanced rifle that is effective at a variety of ranges. The DMR is a semi-automatic rifle that fires 762 by 51 mm full metal jacket armor-piercing rounds at a rate of 167 rounds per minute. These rounds are fed from a 14-round magazine that can be reloaded in 1.7 seconds. If the magazine is empty, however, the reload time is increased slightly because a new round must be chambered before firing. The DMR can deplete the shielding of a Spartan 4 with only 4 rounds, and once the shields are down, 3 more rounds will neutralize the target. But the DMR is also headshot capable, so a single shot to the head after removing the shielding of an opponent will instantly kill them. And if you're forced into close quarters combat, 3 rounds are all that you need before a melee attack will kill. And you will need up to 12 rounds to remove an overshield. When combined with the damage boost, the DMR will remove your opponent's shields with only two rounds and then kill them with two more. And it will need up to six rounds to remove an overshield from your enemy. The DMR is very accurate and has great range, but it does lack power when compared to other ranged weapons, so every shot needs to count because in the thick of battle, missing even a single shot can kill you. Fortunately, the weapon is also very versatile. You will be able to engage opponents at all but the most extreme ranges, so you can easily adapt to situations in order to keep the DMR as effective as possible. Close range combat is where you're going to have the most trouble. Enemies with automatic weapons can easily tear you down if they get in close before you can react. So in smaller engagements, try not to be too aggressive. Take things slow and try to keep your enemies at an arm's reach where you can pick them off before they get too close. And if you do get ambushed, remember that you only need to land three shots before a melee attack will kill your attacker. Just make sure they don't beat you to the punch. Your second major threat is another ranged weapon. Again, a good way to avoid them is to not be too aggressive and make yourself an easy target. In large engagements, don't run out into the open and make yourself vulnerable. Stay where you can get to cover. If a fight begins to turn sour, just duck behind cover and let your shields recharge or reposition to get a better angle on your opponent. You should also never scope in on a target unless you absolutely have to. Staying unscoped will allow you to retain a much higher degree of situational awareness. This way, you don't get tunnel visioned onto one target and get yourself killed trying to finish them off. Sometimes you're just going to have to let a target go. Which brings us to another point. Do not chase with this weapon. Most weapons can easily outgun you at close range, and if you give up a good position to chase after someone, you may just give them the upper hand. It's more important to retain a powerful position than to risk everything for a single kill. Now, one often overlooked aspect of the DMR is that its high versatility actually makes it a very effective support weapon. So we're going to build a loadout designed to encourage you to support your team and also reward you for doing so. For our secondary weapon, we will be using the Plasma Pistol. It can instantly remove the shields of an enemy Spartan, allowing you to finish them off with a simple headshot. A lot of times you'll be able to fire the charge shot and switch back to the DMR before the bolt even hits your enemy. And the charge shot can also disable vehicles on large maps where the DMR is at its most effective. The plasma pistol is not powerful by itself, but it is a good complement to the DMR. Next, we will be using Fragmentation Grenades. Like the DMR, these grenades are very versatile. You can ricochet them off of any hard surface and essentially control when they detonate. 
A well-placed grenade can be a boon to both you and your allies, and with a little practice, you'll be able to place these grenades in the perfect spot every time. But if you're on a map where vehicles are present in abundance, then I suggest switching over to plasma grenades to help take them out. For our armor ability, the regeneration field is wonderful for support and defense. Plant it on a good firing position or behind some cover and you'll be able to hold off multiple opponents. But simply having the field won't guarantee victory. Make sure that you do have some cover to hide behind since taking fire will interrupt the recharge process. And don't be selfish, when your team is pinned down, planting a field for them and providing some support fire can turn the tide of almost any fight. Now the largest drawback of the regeneration field is a long recharge time, so we're going to be using the armor ability efficiency package to reduce this time from 30 seconds to only 15 seconds. And since the regen field will last almost 10 seconds, you should always have access to this ability when you need it. And finally, to reward our hard support work, we will be using Ordnance Priority. This will reduce the amount of points we need to call in personal ordnance drops by about 40%, and if you fill a support role, you will be getting a lot of assist points. Ordnance Priority will help us take advantage of those assist points by turning them into ordnance drops. Now, obviously, some of the competitive modes don't allow for personal ordnance, so in these matches, I suggest taking Drop Recon to help your team control the power weapons on the map. The M395 trades raw power for high versatility. This versatility allows it to adapt to almost any situation and makes it one of the best support weapons available. The only downside is that it is weaker than most other loadout weapons, so you will need to be able to keep your crosshair on your target to keep the weapon effective. But if your aim is true, this jack of all trades but master of none will designate your opponents and mark their grave. Thank you for watching this episode of my Halo 4 Weapon Guides. If you enjoyed it, please check out my other videos and be sure to stay tuned for more to come. As always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt and I'll see you next time.